A recent kernel update is causing Intel to display some significant issues. Valve shows something in a Steam Deck trailer that it probably shouldn't have. We have Xbox sneak peek and much more. You guys asked for it. Here is another video giving you a rundown of some news. And of course, if you are subscribed to the newsletter, this is not going to be news for you. Go ahead down here, click subscribe if you are interested. With that going down, Intel kernel bug could be breaking displays. Now this is specifically to the 5.19.12 kernel, and it only affects uh, laptops that have Intel GPUs. If we go over here to this video and click play, you can kind of see what's going on. It's completely turning on and off the display, full white. Obviously that happening for just a little bit is not gonna be an issue, but if you left your laptop open and let it flash like that for a long time, it can cause some damage. And here we have a Intel developer that actually works on this kernel, says, Greg, I recommend immediate revert of this stuff and a new stable release ASAP, plus a recommendation that no one using laptops with Intel GPUs to run this kernel version. You can see that this was on October 4th. Since then, there has been a point release that's come out that people can upgrade to instead of needing to downgrade. So just kind of a PSA, something to keep note of. It is recommended that if for some reason your computer is on this, to go ahead and change that within Grub. You usually get a little flash and you can pick what kernel you want to run, go up or down from this version. If you don't see that, you see here, you can hold down the shift button while booting and that should go ahead and display for you. Now this one's pretty cool. Uh, Valve accidentally shows off Nintendo emulation on a, a Nintendo Switch trailer. Now unfortunately we can't see the actual video because they went ahead and uh, made it private, took it down for good reason, assumingly to avoid any negative tension from Nintendo themselves. But you can see right here we have Yuzu, I think is how you say it which is a emulation application for Switch games. So whoever's making these uh, marketing videos for Valve definitely knows how to fully utilize their Steam Deck. And even though it was taken down, this is kind of a nod of the hat to some of the uh, non-advertised features of the Steam Deck. As truly with the specs it has, it is an emulation beast for both retro and modern games. Additionally, something that I noted right here that's pretty cool, Steam Deck right here, guess what? You can buy it now. That whole signing up, being put on a wait list and hoping and praying you get an email, those days are long gone. Now the GNOME extension manager just keeps on getting better and oh boy is that true. But before we talk about one of the very best applications for GNOME, we must first thank the sponsor of today's video. These wallets are awesome. They feature a quick release mechanism that fans out all your cards, saving you time and effort. The wallet I have here is called the Parliament and it's my personal favorite. Feels great, quality stitching, and there are additional pockets for extra cards and inside there's a great place to clip your bills or place the optional Bluetooth tracker with solar charging. Don't wanna use this tracker? Well, they have the same wallet and an aluminum card holder with the perfect spot to place an Apple AirTag. They have a fair bit of items with different colors and styles, so chances are they will have the perfect item for you, including additional phone cases, bags, and more. And better yet, right now you could take advantage of their fall sale by saving an additional 25% by using coupon code TECHHUT until November 8th. So check out the link down below to take advantage of this deal. And this is the application right here. Now this is the GNOME extension manager. There's also GNOME shell extensions, which is a separate application that will allow you to enable, disable, and manage some of the configurations. But this one's super cool because it has this right here, browse. You can actually use this to go ahead and find them, sort it by popularity and all that, which is nice because before you would have to go and use the actual GNOME extensions website and add them from Firefox using an extension. To me, that seems like a security vulnerability, so I do like this quite a bit. And I did mention it keeps getting better. One, it's adaptive UI, so it has mobile support and it just resizes and scales very well. If I go to about here, you can see this is on the latest 0.4 version. And if we go to here to what's new, you can see a lot of the changes, including performance stability. They now handle it with extensions as the URL scheme, but most importantly is the upgrade assistant. So if I go ahead, go over to installed, you can see some of the applications that I or extensions that I do have installed and that I'm using on this system. If I go over here to the hamburger menu, go to upgrade assistant, this is going to run a uh, compatibility check to see if it's compatible. So let's say I'm on GNOME 40 for some reason and I wanted to upgrade to 42. I could go ahead and do that, hit check compatibility. It's gonna run through all the extensions 
and then go ahead and spit out how many of them are supported. So you can see of what I have, 88% is compatible with GNOME 42, and I could see background logo is unknown. So for those, I would just wanna go ahead and double check before I upgraded, just a really helpful tool to go ahead and uh, make sure you're gonna have a good time if you're actually uh, using GNOME at all. <laughs> so with that, let's open up our web browser, go ahead and scroll down. Again, if you want to see the full stories of all these within here, there's a link to all the articles for, this one is OMG Ubuntu, this one is Bleeping Computer, so on and so forth. Featured video, if you didn't see my last video, Linux is a major rabbit hole. It's a half hour video, took a lot of time, a lot of effort. Uh, I do recommend you go ahead and give it a watch. And then from there, we have a sneak peek at the Xbox streaming device. Now, Xbox announced over a year ago that they were going to come out with a streaming device, and more recently, they came out with the name Project Keystone for that specific device. And here could be a uh, either an intentional little spoiler or even a leak. Phil Spencer here posted a picture. And if we go ahead, open this up, and look on his top shelf, we have what could very well be the very next Xbox streaming device. This little white box here resembles the uh, Xbox Series S, and we can see it here next to the controller, it's much smaller, and obviously this would work very good with their uh, cloud gaming service and potentially any other streaming services you would want to use, potentially even being like a replacement to something like uh, Apple TV, Roku, or whatever. I know a lot of people like to keep their games and have physical copies and all that, but I do think that that would be a cool device, especially a entry-level device giving people access to gaming. And of course, the actual Xbox account replied, now what did we say about putting old prototypes on your shelf? So it's kind of hard to tell if it is an old prototype or if they're kind of teasing something here. Next up, this is kind of funny, we all know about iPhone 14 and the new uh, feature in which it will detect if you're in a crash using a variety of motion sensing, sound, and loud noises, sudden stops, things like that. And if you have ad block disabled, you probably noticed that they're using it as a huge uh, feature in their advertising push. But one thing that happened is there was a good amount of people that are reporting false positives from theme parks. Look at all these ads. We can see here it happened to a family on Kings Island, an amusement park in Ohio. Only after two days on the job, the iPhone 14 Pro dispatched emergency services when the device sensed the person in question suddenly stop after flying through the air at 50 miles per hour. So false positives like this do make sense, but it, it's curious if the developers expected something like that. I'm not sure if there's a feature, but there should be an option to like disable that for like 10 minutes, but... I don't know. And of course, we're going to end up on the uh, GitHub repository of the week. Volumo is a headless audiophile music player designed to play music with the highest possible fidelity, and it can run on a variety of uh, single board devices and any ordinary PC. If we open up the GitHub repo here, and we go to their link, getting started, you can kind of see a preview of it and what it looks like. Looks like a pretty cool music player. The people who run this actually reached out and want me to take a more in-depth look, which I am considering doing. But we can see some of the features. It supports CD playback ripping, music integration with other services such as Tidal, Spotify, Pandora, and a lot more music artist credits, web-based control interface, and of course streaming to your various devices. Just seems pretty cool overall. Now again, all of this was posted on the Tech Hut newsletter. If you are interested in subscribing to it, there is a button down here. You could go ahead and do that. It's free, but there is an option for $5 a month if you want a monthly update video in which I will go over the content and the various things that we're going to be co covering for the upcoming month, as well as some exclusive content here and there. And to be honest, this is going to be uh, replacing our Patreon account, so if you're interested in just supporting the channel at all, this is going to be the way to do it. So with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day, and goodbye.